Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be starting with a new series of instrument flying. This is the this being the first video we'll be discussing about the introduction to instrument flying and the scanning part. So, just to brief over everyone about the, this series that in this instrument flying series, we will be not discussing to the specific regulations related to instrument flying, but rather what we'll be seeing is how to do instrument flying in an aircraft. How are the different maneuvers that there are in instrument flying, you execute them. We will be studying the theory and we will be also seeing live examples on this, uh, through the simulator uh, eventually after we have learned the maneuver. Whatever that I will be sharing with you guys, I will not be teaching you anything. I will be sharing with you the knowledge that I actually have. and not claiming that what uh, the things that I know, the things that I have been taught are the sole things in instrument flying. There are different maneuvers which can be executed in different ways. I'll be sharing with you guys out the ways that I have known what is the easiest way I have uh, thought ki you can do it in the easiest way possible. And I'll be sharing with you guys uh, the different maneuvers through this series. So instrument flying is basically a flying when you are flying not with the reference of the visual cues outside but you are flying actually looking at the instrument inside see the instrument flying might be very short syllabus in the cpl but i have been guided from the senior instructors that a person who can do instrument flying who is very thorough with the procedures and knows how to do it find it's very easier on the future when you are going forward with the airlines and everything because instrument flying is something which never changes you if you know how to fly the instruments then you will be able to fly the aircrafts because mostly you will be doing instrument flying in your future this is the guidance that i have received and i wanted to share with you guys so that you know how important it is to thoroughly practice instrument flying and uh, basically getting your concepts right at the start of your training itself so first of all, uh, instrument flying is basically looking inside and interpreting the instruments that we have. As we all know that there are two kinds of layout. That is, one is the conventional six-pack cockpit and the Garmin G1000 or the similar instruments which you have in the commercial, just the Airbus and the Boeing. The G1000 is very similar to that. So these are the two basic things, the two basic uh, layouts of the instruments which you can use and modernly basically we'll be discussing majorly through the G1000 systems how you operate that and how you interpret the instruments there and you execute it. So the three fundamentals of instrument flying which are taught are first scanning the instruments, interpreting the instruments and then maneuvering or flying the airplane. So flying the airplane is something that you will be taught on your own when you go to the, your flying training. While uh, the main things on the ground which you can practice are the scanning pattern and the in interpretation of the instruments and the procedures of executing the different maneuvers of the instrument flying. So in this series of instrument flying, three major... Uh, the different maneuvers of instrument flying that we'll be looking for towards is first of all we'll be learning the scanning patterns how do you scan the instruments how do you scan the layout second thing that you'll be moving towards is radial interception what are radials and how do you intercept them then we'll be moving forward towards with course reversals Then we'll be moving forward with how to make DME arcs. What are DME arcs and how you make them. Then we'll be discussing about what are holding patterns. How you hold in a holding pattern and different entries. And the easiest and the simplest way how you can identify which entry you will be doing for your specific holding pattern. So when you're flying, uh, when you're doing your instrument flying, there are two things which are very important to understand is that first of all, while doing your instrument flying, RD communications are very, very, very important because the concept of C and B seen does not apply here. You cannot see the other aircraft visually and 
you are just relying on the information that the ATC has of about the other traffics in case the ATC has procedure control, they are not do they don't have radar. Then all the information that the ATC has is the one which is given all through the RT by different aircraft to them and they manage traffic accordingly. So your RT is very, very, very important. Now the second thing that second advice that it is there is that you will never trust the feelings that you're having about the motion of the aircraft, but you will be trusting on your eyes what you are seeing on the instrument and you are interpreting them. So always rely on your instruments. So this was an introduction to instrument flying. Now we'll be moving forward with understanding the scanning pattern. So scanning pattern is basically how the way that you systematically look at your instruments and you look at them in such a way that you are completely aware about the attitude, the speed and the different aspects of the aircraft simultaneously and you are not fixated on any one thing so that you miss out on another and you are flying as it is required and you do not deviate from your path. Scanning pattern is very very important which ensures that once you have built that in your mind you will be able to scan the different instruments in the different phases of flight the different instruments which are primarily important in different phases of flight. So generally the instrument flying that is done is the attitude instrument flying. That is the primary focus of the pilot is on the instrument uh, on the attitude and the power of the aircraft which defines the performance of the aircraft. What do I mean by this? So basically the changes in the pitch and the roll attitude of the aircraft will be reflected in other instruments like changing in the pitch will different uh, will change the speed of the aircraft will change the altitude of the aircraft while banking will change the rate of turn of the aircraft the heading of the aircraft right so the main the power of the aircraft will decide that how air speed of the aircraft will be for a given pitch attitude so this everything out of all the instruments the attitude of the aircraft that is the pitch and the bank along with the power will decide the performance of the aircraft which is also known as attitude flying so now we understand that the attitude of the aircraft and the power will decide majorly all the other factors as these. So that is why these are referred to as the control instruments, controlling instruments. While other instruments that is your ASP indicator, your attitude, your heading indicator, these are considered as performance and performance instruments. So there are two kinds of instruments, control instruments and performance instruments. So our primary motive is that we are in total control of the control instruments and we are monitoring that whether these control instruments are correct or not with our performance instruments in different phases of flight. So basically scanning pattern is the way you are actually moving your eyes when you're doing your instrument flying. Like this, 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 what are, how basically you are scanning the instrument, that is your scanning pattern so that you are almost at all times aware of the position and performance of the aircraft and how it is flying. So on your screens right now, you can see an image of uh, a PFD or G1000 and you can see here you have your pitch uh, your artificial horizon is completely this this shows your pitch attitude indicator here we have your bank here we have your slip and skid indicator we have here your heading indicator we on the right we have our altimeter and our uh, VSI we have our airspeed indicator here and the rate of turn indicator actually the turn coordinator in the G1000 comes with a magenta line like this when it is aligned with this one line we call this as a rate one turn right I'll first of all I'll brief you that the majorly the scanning pattern which is used is are the radio scans the radio scans by the radio scans we mean that we fix it on one primary instrument we keep looking at that and with reference to it, we just check this and then simultaneously we check our performance instruments. So the control instrument that is the artificial horizon, we generally keep that in the center. We always keep looking at the pitch attitude of the aircraft and then simultaneously check the other parameters of the flying as well. So in this case, generally the call out says that I have checked dot. This is the bank, the dot bank. This will be this uh, altitude, this will be your heading, this will be your speed, this will be your VSI, this will be your rate. There here on the G1000 you have, if you have uh, connected your DME, you will have your DME distance here. And on the, to your right you will have your MFD and generally the MFD will have all the agent parameters. Now you know that what is scanning pattern, you know what are radius scans, what are performance instruments and 
what are control instruments now in different phases of flight different instruments are of priority as they define the performance of the aircraft specifically for that phase of flight so there are two ways that you can do your scanning either you can do your general scanning or either you can do your uh, selective scan the selective scanning requires a little more practice because you scan differently do you scan your instruments differently in different phases of flight while the general scan you can use this is something which you can use in every phase of flight so first we will be so we seeing the selective scanning pattern and how it is executed and then we will see the general scan and you can use anything whichever suits you best because ultimately what matters is that you damn fly that aircraft with the heading and everything perfectly if you are able to do with the general scanning patterns you're good to go if you're doing it with the selective you're good to go you'll be better doing it with the selective because you'll be able to be more precise in that phase of flight so as we discussed there are four generally four phases of flight straight and level climb descend and turn only these four things you are required to do nothing much so while you're doing your straight and level so the scanning pattern would be something like this i will explain you what is it what you can see on your screen right now the first scan and the second scan so the first scan on your straight and level repeat dot bang dot bang what we mean by db db is dot bang dot bang dot bang is dot means your pitch bang means your uh that top car triangle right you check dot bang dot bang you go like dot bang dot bang then you check your dot altitude altitude is toward your right and then you go dot heading so we can see something like this dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading how do you scan dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading now the second scan will be dot bang dot bang dot speed dot heading which is dot bang dot bang dot speed dot heading you're doing dot bang dot bang dot speed dot heading right when you're doing straight and level you'll do first scan dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading dot bang dot bang dot speed dot heading this is how you will be actually scanning the instruments doing your straight and level flight now similarly when you are climbing now climbing may you will there will be obviously you will be climbing to a certain altitude right the scan will be deferred when you are generally you have started your climb and when you are within 500 feet of your desired altitude once you started your climb the first scan and the second scan similarly as it was it was for the state and level the first scan will be dot bang dot bang dot speed dot heading dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading exactly the opposite that we had in straight and level dot bang dot bang dot speed dot heading dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading this is the way that you'll be scanning and once you are within 500 feet of reaching your desired altitude it will be dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading dot bang dot bang dot speed dot heading this will change this will exactly be opposite now now these scanning patterns are derived on the concept that we see that we have seen the control control and the performance instruments let's just see that when you're climbing okay the first scan will be a performance scan performance and non-performance i'm just telling you that why we are scanning speed and heading first so when you are climbing the first important thing is for you is your speed because you don't climb depending upon your attitude basically you're either you do vx or vy climb so in your during your climbs the primary importance is your speed so your speed now it will it is a byproduct of your attitude so first you take dot bang dot bang our control instrument will be our artificial horizon dot bang dot bang dot speed dot heading the second will be dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading you will be constantly switch checking the altitude kya hum climb kar bhi rahe hai ki nahi kar rahe hai whether we are whether we are approaching to that or is that altitude or not now within 5 within 500 feet now it becomes important ki now we are scanning our altitude first and the speed as well right so altitude first so that we know okay, okay we are about to reach it so we just change the scan now similarly for the descent the scans the first and the second scan the first scan will be dot bang dot bang dot vsi dot heading dot bang dot bang dot altitude dot heading that means when you're descending what is important is your you never descend based upon your speeds you always see your rate of descent whenever you are descending your speed is not important what is more important is that your rate of descent is as required by for the specific procedure let's just say that if you are doing an ILS approach you will you can see on the charts that there is a specific rate of descent you are supposed to maintain while you are climbing there is nothing because while you are climbing it is 
uh, of the priority importance you reach that specific altitude. But while you are descending, your rate of descent becomes of a primary importance. Now, the second scan will be dot bang, dot bang, dot like you are heading. Okay. So, within, when you are within 500 feet of reaching, this will, the scan will change from dot bang, dot bang, dot altitude, dot heading, dot bang, dot bang, dot altitude. This is the scanning pattern for descent. Now, when you are doing level turns, or another thing that I want to mention is, an instrument flying, whenever you will be turning, all the turns will be rate 1 turns. You will never do rate 2, rate 0.5, anything. No, no, no. You will always be on point doing your rate 1 turns. Level turns, may the scanning pattern will be dot bang, dot bang, dot altitude, dot speed. Dot bang, dot bang, dot altitude, dot speed. Dot bang, dot bang, dot heading, dot rate of turn. Rate of turn and heading both come here. I'll show you. Here you can see the heading is here and your rate of on turn will be shown here. And when you are within 30 degrees of your desired heading, your scan will change from dot bang, dot bang, dot altitude, dot heading, dot bang, dot bang, dot speed, dot heading. So this was the selective scanning method. I have just been very fast with this. You can just rewind the video to go through. You can just slow it down so that you can again re-revise the selective scanning pattern. And now I will share with you the general scanning pattern that you do. In the general scanning pattern, you just dot bank, dot bank, dot altitude, dot heading, dot speed, dot rate, dot DMA, dot engine. You check everything in one scan. Dot bank, dot bank, dot altitude, dot heading, dot speed, dot DMA, dot engine, dot bank, dot bank, dot altitude, dot heading, dot speed, dot DMA, dot engine, dot timer. Whenever you're doing your procedures, timer becomes sort of more important as well. So you just dot timer, dot bank, dot bank, dot altitude, dot speed, dot heading. You just do it like this. So general scan is that you check everything simultaneously again and again, again and again, again and again. You're just che checking it until unless you're able to maintain your aircraft in the air through selective scanning or general scanning. Either you can choose. Nothing matters. You do it and you're very good to go. Guys, I've uh, tried to keep it brief and knowledgeable. I hope I was able to give a brief introduction to you guys about the instrument flying and the scanning patterns as well. So... In the next video, we'll be discussing about radials and radial interception and we'll be seeing through live examples through simulator that how actually do we do a radial interception. So this would be all for uh, this video for today. This is Animesh Sanyar signing off. Sayonara.